Hello, my name is Sweeness, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can access a render target asset, the one in your content browser, in your custom shaders. That way, you can access the result of your pixel or compute shader in any material that you like, whether it's a mesh material or even a post process material. If you don't know how to create or set up a custom pixel or compute shader, I recommend you watch my video on the topic first. I'll have a link in the description and there'll be a card clicky thingy somewhere on the screen as well. The effect this time is just going to be a very simple invert where I essentially do a one minus the screen color. And as you can see on the plane, it shows the inverted color and then inside that it reinverts it to the normal color and vice versa until it's a blurry mess. You can also notice that some color does get lost, but that's because the values extend beyond one and so they get clipped out of it. As always, if you want to get straight to the code, you can find a link to the GitHub repo in the description. Now going over the shader itself, you can see we've got the texture size, the scene color sampler, the scene color texture, and then our main shader function, which is pretty simple. We've just got the UV calculation and then we sample the scene color texture and then we do a one minus scene color. So for the C++ side of the shader, we've just got a simple parameter struct mirroring what we have in the shader itself, and then a very basic global shader class. And here is how the implements macro looks. Before I get into the scene view extension side of things, I want to show one quick change. And this is just how I'm doing it for this tutorial. But in the render target subsystem, CPP, I am manually loading the render target itself and then setting it using a setter in the scene view extension itself. At the top of our scene view extension class, we have two things. The first is our texture render target 2D pointer. This is set previously in the subsystem. And then below that, we have a pulled render target reference count pointer. And this is what we'll use to actually do the render graph side of things. And overall, the functions are all pretty much the same, except down at the bottom, I've got the setter function, set the render target, and then a function called create pull render target. Now this can only be done in the render thread, so I followed the same naming philosophy and added underscore render thread to the end of it. Moving into the CPP side of things, we've got the constructor, same as before. And then in the pre post process pass, the top is very similar, except if we don't have a render target applied, we're just going to early exit. Otherwise, we're going to check if we have a valid pulled render target. And if not, we create a new one. Now, when we're creating a new one, what we're doing is first we check if we're in the render thread. Otherwise, some of these parts will throw errors. And the first thing we need to do is to get the resource. Then after that, we get the RHI reference. And then we need to create the struct. And following that, we need the render target description. And the description works in the same way as the create texture or create buffer description works. So we have our size and then we've got our texture format, both of which we get from the resource and the RHI. Then we have our clear color and our creation flags. Then after that, the main magic happens where we create the untracked element, passing in our description. The pulled render target is a reference. So this is the output of the function. And then the item struct that we created earlier goes afterwards. You could probably just do it yourself as inside that function, it pretty much looks like this. After we've created the pulled render target, like before, we get the viewport, global shader map, and the scene color texture. And then to access the render target resources, we need to register the external texture, passing our pulled render target, and then giving it a name for it. And also because we are rendering to a render target rather than doing a full screen render, we're using the dimensions of the render target texture. These values are what's set in the asset itself. Then like before, we just set our parameter struct, get our pixel shader from the global shader map, and then add a full screen pass to the render graph. And that's pretty much it. In the next tutorial, I'm going to cover custom material nodes. So these are the nodes that you see in your material editor, like your plus and your minus, and then your sample texture and all that stuff. I'll be creating a custom one of those. And if you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a like and subscribe for more. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you.